is around six to eight weeks, you might expect spindles to show up, but they don't become synchronous until two years. <laughs> That's right. You guys are ready to do some intervention on this kid. <laughs> oh. Hopefully. If when it kind of goes, you know, activity and then pretty flat. It looks pretty we, flat. <laughs> so this kid is now more awake and you can tell because it's more continuous. You can also see more emotion artifact. Mm -hmm. And you see there's just kind of a mixture of frequencies. There's some delta, there's a little bit of theta in there. There's some superimposed alpha and that kind of poly mixture frequency is normal for the awake background and a neonate. And yeah, we can refer to that as well as activity. Can I ask, what, so when do you, so there's, you know, predominantly delta here. And All right, so as mentioned somewhere in the title in this video, I'm going to be going into some research on babies and children and uh, the brain waves that they emit. So babies, slow brain waves could predict problems. The brain waves of healthy newborns, which appear more abnormal than those of severe stroke victims could be used to accurately predict which babies will have neurodevelopmental disorders. Now, as I mentioned, this is a great research for helping babies and helping children to find uh, some disorders that they might have early on and attack them. But as usual, scientists don't see the full picture. They don't really understand the very implications of their own research. So I'm going to repeat, why am I talking about newborns? Why am I talking about Delta brainwaves? Because this video is not really about it is about newborns but it is about delta brainwaves i'm going to be in uh, be going into a little bit of eeg and this might seem like this might seem boring to people who don't really know why am i talking about delta brainwaves but if you already know you can skip to the next segment otherwise i'm just going to go briefly into why am i speaking about delta brainwaves i've been doing a lot of research on this uh these delta brainwaves the slowest brainwaves that we can have have been related to near that experiences to um, antigens, to the psychedelic breakthrough, to the most transcendental experiences that people can have. When they go into hyperspace and they uh, meet God or they meet aliens or angels or what have you, all these strange reports, uh, some of the research that is coming now, they mainly in the other experiences and antigens seems to point at uh, point to the idea that these experiences are happening while people are going through this delta brainwave uh, stage. Uh, what's, what is amazing is that these are the, some of the slowest brainwaves that we can have. We barely have any um, there, we shouldn't have any conscious experience while this is happening. This is why during the sleep stage, we go through something called Delta sleep stage, where um, scientists say that it's, quote unquote, a dreamless uh, state. And now as, as I debunked this, I, I made a video about this, I debunked this. Um, I'm going to link it somewhere on the screen. There's no indication to say that we don't have any consciousness while this is happening. It's a different sort of consciousness, but there's no indications that we don't have any sort of consciousness. So what people are asking is, how come we're having the most transcendental, emotionally charged experiences while we shouldn't, like the craziest hallucinations, they call it, they think these are hallucinations, while we shouldn't have any conscious experience because the brain is not really working. And the argument is that these experiences are not happening in the brain. So what these researchers are looking into is how come babies are not dying while they live for two years without brain activity? How come they're not having a stroke? So I'm going to go into this uh, here. All right, so as I said, this is University of Queensland researcher investigating whether an EEG could identify apparently healthy infants who will later be found to have neurodevelopmental deficits. Clinical symptoms of neurodevelopmental disorders affecting movement, vision, or other functions often do not become evident until the toddler, um, the toddler years or later, Dr. Finnegan says. So as I said, this is going to be research, the research right here, predominant slow EEG activity in healthy neonates, transient thalamocortical dysrhythmia. I'm going to link it uh, below as usual. This is going to be going on ongoing research. And I'm also going to be linking this. This is, this is not research really, but this is a learning EEG side where the pediatric EEGs where people learn about EEGs right here so all of this is going to be linked below along with the article here so um, our preliminary results in data from the first 60 babies looks uh, very promising so this is a doctor who looks into stroke patients as I said so what they're wondering is how come babies are not having a stroke 
Okay, our detailed analysis involved converting the EEG signals into objective measures of brain function, brain function like blood pressure or a Richter scale. When we applied this analysis in the babies, we were surprised that they had so much slow brain activity, aka delta brain waves, typically about one wave per second compared to eight to ten in adults. One wave per second compared to eight to ten in adults. So the baby, the baby's brain. Uh, it's not working. The, the brains of babies, they're not really working. They're not really active. These slow wave patterns account for an average of 85% of the brain activity in newborns. In adults, anything over 50% would be considered abnormal. Uh, that what this means over 50% of slow brain waves. If, if adults were having over 50% of slow brain waves, which in babies is an average of 85%, would be considered abnormal. And at 85%, we would expect them to die within hours due to severe stroke. So this is what they're saying here. How come babies are not having a stroke? How come, uh, I mean, they look alive, not like they're not alive. And so... What does all of this mean? What am I talking about? This? This is, there are some theories in the literature which suggest that... So there is this big question also, in even in recurring politics. When does conception begin? When do we are actually ourselves? When are, are, is our, let's say that there is a soul. When does our soul come, come into the body? So a lot of the literature and some theories suggest that the soul is going in and out from wherever it comes from it goes in and out into the baby and this would make a lot of sense with the research here when i first heard these stories i was i thought they were nonsense as usual but the more you look into the research you find certain interesting things this is what seems to be happening during the delta stage what seems to be happening during the delta stage whether it is in the latter moments of a person's life while they are fading from this world or during the psychedelic experience or during the, the the deep dream sleep, the deep uh, sleep stage, what seems to be happening is that whatever we are, whatever our information is, whatever let's call it soul is, is departing from our body somehow. Uh, you may say that it is connected by a silver cord or however you want to look at it, but it seems that whatever we are is disconnected from our physical bodies and it goes back and forward. And this is the delta brainwave um dynamic that seems to be going on here dr finnegan says low brain waves were first reported in the 1950s but it had never been understood why they occurred in healthy newborns so this is only until the 1950s this is barely 70 years ago there's not it's it's fairly recent when we think about the history of humanity. It's fairly recent since we knew that this is happening in newborn babies. Uh, it has never been understood why. So there's not a lot of research. There's not a lot of um, questions about this. Because as I said, when you look at all of this, it seems that, yeah, it's whatever. Okay, sure, this is pretty charts and whatever what does this really mean now when you start tying what i've been talking about and all of the research on the brain waves then this might be a very interesting line of research but until then it, it was like whatever it, it's, it's just a sleep stage it, it, it doesn't really matter now when you look deep into it it seems very interesting. He proposes it is due to incomplete brain connections. This is a fair assessment. This is an educated assessment here. That uh, because the baby is just growing up, is just forming uh, himself, herself, itself, and it's barely getting these brain connections. So this is why there is no brain activity. This would make sense. However, correlation does not mean causation. What, what, what this means, just because this could be a, the reality does me does not mean this is the cause and now why would i say this i would say this because i've done a lot of research on antigens and near death experiences and meditation and all of these things which suggests that this is um, something that naturally happens when people um go into certain states of consciousness now why why is, is it it's not simply due to incomplete connections because we do it every day during the sleep stage people go into delta state um every single night 
and this does not mean that our brain is incomplete. So this is this is not the causation of this. This is this is a correlation, but this is not the causation. We do not go into delta because we have incomplete in, incomplete brain connections. It is during the delta sleep that our body regenerates. And well, scientists are saying that we have no consciousness. As I said, I met some. Uh, I brought up some research about this. It, there is no. This is oversimplified. There is no real reason to say that this stage is dreamless. During this stage, there seems to be what they are calling a quote unquote selfless state. Another thing that happens during Delta sleep stage is that people, this is when sleep walking occurs in some sleep disorders. This is how are they walking if they have no consciousness? There is some sort of consciousness which we under, do not understand. After this sleep stage is where people go into REM and there is a paralyzation on the muscles except their eyes. So the eyes are moving and they are, it is obvious that they're experiencing something because the eyes are moving, they are sort of flinching. But since the muscles are paralyzed, we are not acting our, our dreams. But it seems that during the delta stage, we can still act our dreams or whatever is happening because people are sleepwalking. Uh, so when, when I talk about dreams and I've done a lot of uh, videos and a lot of stuff about dreams, when you think about dreams and all the literature on dreams where people have these premonitions, these, these, these dreams where they see events that are going to occur in the future, where they say that they they can communicate with some other intelligences, or during their dreams is when they have some spiritually transformative experiences, and they have a very near-death experience-like experience where they go and meet a light, or uh, I personally had some dreams where I've seen people who have passed on. I have very, I've had very meaningful dreams where 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 some questions are answered and a lot of people experience this some scientists even said that some of their greatest ideas came through dreams so it seems that we tap into dreams as carl gustav jung would have said we tap into this uh collective unconscious this larger connection of the subconscious mind that we all share and when i say we all it seems all of humanity and even perhaps else so correlation of the brain not being complete does not mean causation because we do this every day um, we're going to delta every day but dr finnegan is just barely looking into this um kudos to dr finnegan because there's not a lot of research on this a research will be the first time these measures from newborns have been compared to clinical measures in any detail. So this is 2017, only until 2017 are we really looking into this. So we don't really know what's going on here. If you're on the path of finding the truth about reality and our purpose as humans on Earth, the information that I have to share concerns you. After a lifetime of research in philosophies ranging from Buddhism to the occult, I've encountered themes and patterns along some baffling information that is beginning to be seriously studied by science. A rational divine outline, The Ghost of Jesus, is the first iteration of this project, where I analyze the message of Jesus without dogmatism, fanaticism, or religious bias. You can find my work available on Amazon on the link below. If you find this work valuable, consider subscribing, sharing, and following me on social media as it will help others in the same path to find this information. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.